once again and welcome to uh, Family Time. As you know, Family Time is a program that looks at uh, families, the various stages of the family, bringing up children, relationships between husband and wives. Today, what we're going to be looking at is the various signals that we get in our marriage. Um, Pastor Kinsley is here, Pastor Cynthia is here. And what they want to do today is to compare the signals that you get into your marriage to the signals that you get on a dashboard. You know, uh, most of us here have cars and we're very familiar with the various signals that our dashboard gives us. Um, if you need to buy fuel, uh, the fuel gauge flashes up. Uh, if you're running out of oil, if the engine is overheating, there's light that comes on. And uh, Pastor Kinsley and Pastor Cynthia say these signals can be compared to the signals that happen in each and every single marriage. Um, people say uh, when the marriage, unfortunately for those who head to the divorce court and the marriages break up, unfortunately you get people saying, oh, we don't know what happened. You know, all of a sudden I woke up one morning and I realized that my marriage was over. Pastor Kinsley and Pastor Cynthia say that is not exactly the case. There were signals all along, just as you got signals on your car dashboard. Unfortunately, a lot of us ignore these signals. You know what happens to your car if you ignore the dashboard signals. So Pastor Kinsley and Pastor Cynthia today will take us through um, you know, the dashboard, paying attention to your family dashboard. So you're very welcome uh, once again uh, to Family Time. And I'll start with uh, Pastor Kinsley. Um, I get a feeling that because you're a man, that is why you're talking about dashboards and all the rest of it. So, you know, give us a bit of, of background. How did this whole dashboard thing come about? It's amazing. I woke up one morning and uh, the picture of a dashboard uh, was staring at me. And, uh, uh, and as I was praying, the Lord began uh, showing me the similarities uh, between the breakdown of a car and how marriages break down. And uh, what kept on coming to me was the fact that no car just suddenly breaks down. Of course, at times one in a million times that can happen. And no marriage, uh, marriages does not just break down. Uh, before they do, the signals uh, would have flashed for years. And because uh, many men, and for that matter also the, the, the women, do just turn a blind eye to uh, these warnings, uh, the unfortunate thing is that, as you rightly said, they head towards the cause. And for many, uh, the car breaks down right in the middle of the road. Mm. That's unfortunate. Mm. But see, dashboards, women, we're not very good at dashboards. I mean, sometimes um, something flashes up on my dashboard and I, I really don't even know what it means. Mm -hmm. So for the average woman who is listening to us, how can they engage with this dashboard concept? I think many women, there are many women who drive as well. And even if you don't drive, um, you would have learned the signals probably through your husband. So when a light flashes, you quickly run home and say, Kofi, come on, what is this? Can you help me with this one? And then he'll teach you, oh, this one means this. And you've got to either refuel or change your oil or whatever. And so um, I think it's a wake-up call to all of us. that. And I think that I, I believe that the dashboard signal thing that God has given to Pastor Kingsley is quite timely. When he shared it with me, I thought, wow, it is said that, I'm, div I'm diverting a bit, but it is said that um, men don't read marriage books. It is said, the survey that's taken of um, bookstores, and they say that usually it is women who buy marriage books. Men don't necessarily buy marriage books. So this thing about dashboard will, will really help men to go looking for uh, when that book comes out uh, to read about it. But yes, I believe that um, yeah, we can learn from, from these signals as well as women. Okay. Pastor Kay, Pastor C just said there's a book. So I, can you tell us a little bit about the book um, so that when is it coming out, um, what is it on? Yes, there are about 25 uh, signals on a car's over 25 signals on a car's dashboard. And uh, um, I believe that um, um, I'll be picking each of those and we'll be relating that to uh, the signals that show up 
uh, in our marriages. So hopefully the book will be coming out before the end of the year. Oh, before the end of the year. So, you know, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we'll launch the book yes. uh, when it comes uh, on this program. So uh, watch the book stance uh, when the book comes out. Make sure that you get a copy. We'll let you know as soon as it's available which bookshops uh, you can buy it from. Um, and then you can engage with the process. But Pastor, dashboards. Okay, I'm now sort of envisioning a dashboard in my head. And I know... Uh, you know the dashboard signs some flash uh, you know with my car sometimes it starts with a white uh, signal and then sometimes it's yellow and then it's red I mean when it's red then I know danger don't move the car so in your own mind uh, can you explain to us before we come to the actual components of the dashboard can you in a marriage when is it white when is it yellow when is it red uh, then we can go from there uh, let me go back a little bit and uh, Juliet began talking about the fact that the truth is that it is an established fact that every car has a dashboard and um, as we all rightly know every dashboard has many signals which of course alerts us uh, of how well a car is performing. Um, it represents the easiest way by which a car talks back to the driver. You see, those tiny, tiny, tiny uh, lights that light up uh, in the, uh, on the dashboard is a means by which um, that car is communicating to the driver how well your car is performing. And how you pay attention to those signals that uh, pops up will determine and also ensure the safety of you, the driver, the passengers that are in the car, and the other road users, and other uh, uh, drivers. And when you compare that to, to, to marriage, uh, if a driver does not do that, not only will he endanger himself and the other uh, passengers in the car, and of course, the other drivers and other pedestrians on the air. Uh, so when you relate that to the marriage, when a couple pay attention to the warning signals that pops up on their dashboard in terms of their marriage, what they are doing is that they are ensuring their own safety in that relationship. It is saving them from pressure, from unnecessary stress, and for many mental homes. They are also protecting the children because many children are unable to, uh, to recover after divorce. And also, other families that are connected to that marriage. And you and I know for sure that uh, marriage is not only a relationship between a man and a woman, but marriage is also involve families. And when I marry from a family, that family becomes part of myself. So any divorce does not only affect just the two and the children, but the entire uh, uh, um, uh, broad family. So paying attention to the dashboard warnings in uh, marriages is extremely important. Okay. But see, where is this dashboard? You know, how would, you know, the car is easy. When you get into a car, the dashboard is in front of you. You can see it. But in a marriage, you know, where, where would you see that? I think that in a marriage, um, it is not uh, a, you, you don't see a tangible dashboard but I believe that you see it in the day-to-day -day, uh, conversation it comes through in conversations it comes through in attitudes so you can pick up what's happening um, from from what's happening in your home and the temperature in your home uh, whether your home is is warm or cold or attitudes towards each other are warm or cold and the, and the language being used um, are real signs to, to where we are in our marriages. Okay. So in essence, the dashboard is like a, it's like a barometer that you're measuring, uh, you know, the heat or the <coughs> strength or, you know. So, um, see, from what you're saying, if I've been married for 10 years and I want to work out the health or the strength of my marriage, how would I be using the dashboard uh, to work that out? Okay, I think... Um, Pastor Kinsey, what he has done is uh, looked at every 
item, um, started to look at every item. For instance, um, he's looked at, 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 at the light. Well, how do you know that your light, <laughs> the light um, that is in the car uh, or in your marriage is going off? Um, I believe that how you know that your light goes off is that when the light is on in your car, you see everything that is on the dashboard. You know, it, it all lights up. Now, when that mechanism goes, you don't see where you are going. You don't see anything. Um, that likened to a marriage is as if your vision, you have no vision. There's no transparency in the marriage. Where there is no transparency in the marriage, it means that the light is gone off. Uh, that light mechanism is gone off because you know people do things without telling any other, each other. I don't know where my husband is going. If you know how am I supposed? To, or how am I to ask my husband where are you going? I don't know anything about the finances. Whatever is happening, there's just absolutely no transparency at all. When that happens, you know that the light in that marriage is gone off. So as if the car light has gone out. So that, that is a broad light that shows us what is even on the dashboard. Okay. So, Pasquet, um, these various lights and the components of the dashboard, I want you to take us through, um, you know, for instance, uh, okay, one, what are these lights? Is it like you see in a car, the oil, the fuel, okay. and then what does it signify? So in a marriage, if your oil light is on, how does it, what does it mean? Okay. Um, Juliet, uh, I know you will agree with me that uh, when uh, a driver sits at the wheels, uh, the prayer of that driver is that uh, wherever I'm going, uh, my hope and faith is that this car would take me there safely, um, irrespective of the distance. And as to whether that would take the driver there is very much dependent on how you pay attention to your dashboard. And um, the question is, um, uh, and my prayer as we go into detail on this issue is that uh, people will now begin to measure the health of their marriages. Uh, after being married, whether a year or we celebrated our 30th we wedding anniversary this year, the question that uh, just before the 21st of May I had to ask myself was, what is the health of my marriage? Uh, what are the signals I should pay attention to? And uh, in the wisdom of God, he has given us his Holy Spirit as a people of God who prompts us in our daily walk with Christ. And um, relating that to the dashboard, what God in his wisdom has done is that uh, uh, on the dashboard of every car, um, it's a tiny uh, indicator which uh, indicates how your oil uh, is, uh, the levels of your oil in the car. And when, this, uh, when the oil uh, light pops up, normally it pops yellow and then if you don't pay much attention, it will pop on red. When that oil pops up, what it is saying to you is that it indicates that your oil levels are low or that you must change your oil. Because driving with insufficient oil uh, cannot only become a danger to you, the driver, but it can also cause the engine, engine to cease. So, <laughs> you see, the, the truth is that it is said that before you move a car, you must check your oil. Yes. But I wonder how many people listening to me this morning mm -hmm. do that. And I must confess, I don't remember the first time I opened, uh, uh, sorry, the last time I opened the, uh, uh, the bonnet of my car to pull out the, 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 the measuring rod to see to check the levels of my oil. I just start the car and once the car starts and uh, the uh, oil indicator doesn't come off, off I go. But oil must be changed very often to ensure the smooth running of the vehicle. The truth is that many, many, many drivers don't do that. And it leads to their engine malfunctioning, uh, the rings and the pistons in their car 
breaking down, or for many of them, the engine, engine seizing totally. Uh, and at times, so when that light pops up, um, it's an indicator that either your oil is leaking or there's something wrong. But most of the times, especially with cars that are fairly new, when the oil starts uh, uh, running out and the light comes up, pops up very often, it means something is leaking badly. And that must be checked immediately. The question then is that uh, when you relate that to marriage, we must ask ourselves, what is, what is leaking in my marriage? Uh, is joy leaking in my marriage? I must check the level of, of the joy in my marriage. Is there joy in my marriage? Is, is the joy leaking? Uh, is peace leaking uh, uh, in my marriage? Is understanding leaking in my marriage? Is respect leaking in my marriage? And the moment I begin to uh, uh, see that these things are becoming real, then one will have to seriously sit down and begin to ask oneself many questions and seek a remedy. Yeah. Percy, uh, and I, I will confess, <laughs> I, I don't even know where the oil in my car is. I've never done that before. Okay, so I, I, you know, like Pastor said, he doesn't remember the last, I've never done it before. My husband always does it, so I don't know. Um, but more seriously, um, you know, if you, Pastor is talking about this assessment of knowing whether the oil is leaking or not. Is this a, you know, a one-man individualistic thing or is it, he said, you know, just before your marriage anniversary, he sat down and he did. Was it a, the two of you sitting down saying, okay, my dear, what are we leaking? Or is it an individualistic exercise that you do on your own and then try and seek remedies? I think that it should be both. It should be both an individual thing um, and it should be uh, something that you do together um, from time to time. And the reason I say that it is an individual thing is that um, we need to check ourselves first uh, in a marriage. I, before I accuse the other person of doing this and that, I need to also check what have I done to contribute to whatever is happening. And so it's always so very important to check our own selves first, see where you yourself are leaking, where you yourself are falling short. It could be that whatever behavior that you are running to the counselor about, that could have been because you, I had started something. So it is so very vital that we do that. Um, do it as an individual and also do it as a, as a, as a, as a couple. Um, but this thing about oil, um, I, I see part of it to be, um, if the oil has to do with the engine of the car, for me, it, it means that it's one of the most important components of a, of a car that you just cannot miss if the oil starts blinking. Uh, and the engine of the car is what makes the car the car. So I, I believe that in that sense, then the oil that we need to seek is the oil of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy pleasures forevermore. Pastor's talking about when we are leaking oil, we are leaking joy, we are leaking peace. And who, where is the source of peace? What's the source of joy? I believe that that source is, is God himself, who is the author of marriage. And so from time to time, we need to check whether we are getting our supply and, and from the source of marriage. And, and, and many times we forget who the, our source is and we go off and do our own thing um, without really going before the Lord and seeking his presence in our marriages every, every moment. You, the joy is the Holy Spirit, okay, in, in your view, okay, and it's not a, a one-man exercise. But Pastor, just to take you slightly back to a point Pastor C had made earlier on about the fact that you can only see the dashboard if there is even light in the car, and that is transparency. Okay. So I want to paint a practical scenario. Here is a, a man and a woman that, you know, or, well, perhaps the oil has already leaked because it's difficult. Some, you know, I think I'm taking this to the issue of communication. Yeah. It's not everyone that, you know, self-analysis yeah. comes that easily to. So for a, a couple that are already struggling 
uh, and they're not able to really sit down and say, my dear, this is where you're going wrong. This is where I can help. Mm -hmm. You know, how will they even begin to come to the starting point of admitting that our oil is leaking? So therefore, we need to top up by relying on the Holy Spirit. Okay. You see, Juliet, the essence and um, a very strong yardstick to measure uh, a healthy marriage is when two, uh, the two people in the marriage understand that marriage is not necessarily what you are taking out of that relationship, but what you give. And couples should always come to a realization that my purpose in this relationship is that just because God is my source and he is the source of love, I will outgive my partner in terms of love in this relationship. And so the moment uh, that is observed, the first thing that the two have to do, is one will have to honestly come down and, uh, and uh, say that, look, things seem not to be working. You see, and one of the functions of oil is that it lubricates the car. So in any relationship where there's tension, it means the oil is leaking. So uh, the, the two will honestly have to sit down and, and, and uh, ask themselves the question, what is it that is leaking in this relationship? Why um, uh, is the joy leaving our marriage? How come that we are being drawn apart? What are uh, the, the, the causes and what is it that is happening? And this must always begin with the two. Uh, asking each other, look, let's be honest and examine our hearts, but most importantly, coming together, holding your hands in prayer. You see, one of the sure signs that a marriage is leaking oil is when one becomes petty, agitated over any unnecessary issue, when <clears throat> the minor things become the major issues, when things that in the past uh, one would have seen as a joke now becomes a major problem. The moment those signs begin to show, your oil is leaking. And the solution is to go on your knees. Because uh, the Lord himself promised us that he will exalt our horn like the horn of the unicorn and anoint our head with fresh oil. So each morning, we need a fresh oil. Hence, prayer. And I personally, as a pastor, have realized in my own personal life, Julia, that times when I'm petty, times when I'm agitated, and uh, uh, oh, common things become a major issue to me, is when the pressure of the day was such that I did not have quality time to wait in the presence of the Lord to pray. Because the anointing comes as you study the word and spend quality time in prayer. Then that smoothness comes over you. Uh, you see that the Holy Spirit himself begins to lubricate your heart. Then that, that peace returns, that joy returns. And, and when your partner says something, that you, you, you take it as a, as, as, as a joke, you know. But the truth is that, unfortunately, we forget that only the Lord has that grace and is willing to lubricate our marriage with joy each morning. And we do that as we go. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. It is not in argument. It is not in watching soap uh, uh, oppress and all that. It is only found in the presence of the Lord. And uh, any family where joy is leaking, uh, let them put this to the test. Let them examine themselves. Uh, um, see what they've done for that leakage to, um, uh, uh, to be taking place. But then most importantly, Hold your hands, go on your knees, confess the two of you before the Lord, and lift your marriage once again uh, uh, to the Lord on whom your marriage in the first place is built. Thank you, Pastor Kay. 
But you see, this is like most of us, what Pastor Kay was saying about, you know, we, we, we become petty. And mm -hmm. so from what Pastor Kay is saying, it looks as if this is something that is happening quite often to all of us. Um, and then the issue then, of course, is that we are not able to go before God and pray. So I want you as a mom to give us, you know, uh, you know, this is London. Everybody's busy. Uh, and there's always in the morning, there's so much happening. In the afternoon, there's so much happening. In the evening, there's so much happening. So as a mom of the home, how can you uh, isolate some time uh, to help, you know, so that you and your husband can come together and have this discussion and even go before God, if there's a need to go before God? I think that the, the, the busyness of our lifestyle is, is so real so real that you know why um, we are so busy with everything that we do that we we sometimes are careless about our marriages and I think when pastor was talking about <clears throat> um, when we ignore the signs and I think that only a, a careless driver will ignore the signs and hence only a careless husband and a careless wife will ignore the signs and I think Maybe careless sounds like too much of a strong word, but it is because if we see the signs and we don't do anything about it and think that the thing will go by itself, it doesn't go by itself. You know, um, um, someone, one of the preachers, what was his name? Um, Michael Youssef is the one who said, marriage doesn't stand still. It's either getting better or getting worse. So if you think, well, I've seen some signs and this thing will just go by itself, it will not go. Uh, T.D. Jakes also said this. He says he gets angry when people come to him with a marriage that is completely broken. You know, ignoring that there were earlier signs. Why didn't you do anything about it when the signs came up, Amber? Why are you now coming to me thinking that I can wave some wand and it all gets back together as it used to be? And you blame the pastor. <laughs> and, and sometimes they do. I mean, it's as if, you know, you've got some kind of thing that by the time you've spoken, everything comes back together again. It's taken years for the sickness to be where it is. So you know what? I believe that every marriage has a responsibility as we have time to do every other important thing. Marriage is important. It will make you or break you. So it is important that we spend time to talk. Talk uh, maybe at the end of the day when you get into bed. Talk and say, you know what? I realize this is happening. Can we talk? And just to add a little bit to that, Juliet, as we check uh, the oil levels in our marriages uh, by going on our knees, forgiveness becomes much easier. Letting the past go becomes much easier because we always receive a fresh anointing from his presence. Okay. Thank you very much, Pastor Cynthia and Pastor Kinsley. Uh, over to us. Uh, we all have dashboards on our cars. We have dashboards in our marriages. And today we've spoken about um, when the oil sign flashes up, what does that mean? Next time uh, when we come, uh, we'll be looking at the speedometer on our dashboard, on our marriage dashboard. What does the speedometer tell us? Are we speeding? Are we too slow? Are we just, you know, in the normal lane? So stay tuned and catch you next time. Mm -hmm.